everybody how you guys doing welcome back to the channel So today, in a little bit of housekeeping first, before we get today's video, I want to talk about a couple of things. One, we have a sister channel that we're um, sponsoring and sort of supporting. Uh, it is called The Gamer Tube on YouTube, uh, hosted by Sean S6000. So um, he's going to have some pretty awesome gaming content. Here he is right here. Oh, baby! <laughs> we're sharing a studio. And uh, he is uh, going to be providing some gaming content on multiple different platforms uh, for you guys to kind of watch and enjoy. Make sure you guys go over, like, and subscribe. Uh, also drop some game hints of what you guys like and to see him play. Because like I said, he's got Switch, PS4, Xbox, um, Nintendo, and Steam on the computer. Um, he's also a Linux advocate. He's been using Linux for... A long time so he's one of the one of the people we definitely want to get behind so let's go give him some love and support the other thing i want to take you to is to the linux tube youtube web page now in this web page um we are at 1170 subscribers thanks guys yay awesome i really appreciate the love uh the other thing i want to show you is we have memberships available on the channel now all you have to do is click and join if you join you get uh, different badges for your for your um, membership level uh, for time length of time. Also, uh, you will get uh, early access as well to different little member level, you know, like community posts or little videos that I'll be doing um, that way as well. Those are the perks. Also, um, you could join me at the uh, Patreon, the Linux Tube underscore the underscore Linux Tube underscore over at Patreon.com. So uh, it's also a link in the in the bio and also be in the description of my videos. But furthermore, also, if you look under the store tab, you will see the actual TLT shop here um, where we have some apparel already designed and ready to, to be ordered for by you guys over there. Um, some select stuff. Otherwise, you can go to the TLT dot shop and uh, go see the full content over there we got pillows curtains we got water bottles mugs i love the water bottles i have two of those and the mugs uh and one's on it's gonna, gonna be on its way as soon as uh as soon as i get it and ship it to a patreon so yeah i i'm just telling you there's a lot of good stuff over there as well so make sure you visit that all right now for today's video it is a once again it's a user suggested one or subscriber suggested one that they wanted me to take a look at MX Linux, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, MX Linux is a uh, pretty new kid-friendly operating system. Uh, it is uh, based on Debian. It is pretty beautiful, actually. Uh, it, it's one of the ones I started with uh, when it first came out because uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't start with it. I should say I started with Debian and Ubuntu decades ago, but it's one that I jumped to when it came out because I thought of how wonderful it was. And at the time when it was in its inception, it actually had this little section over here called MX tools. If you see what I'm highlighting right here and they put a whole bunch of tools into it. that just makes everything so awesome. It, I mean, it, it's, it's just, it's well done, well curated. The apps work well. It's fast. Um, it's just a thing of beauty completely. So anyhow, this is what you're greeted with when you download it and you install it. Uh, it's just like every other Linux installation. You, your self-guided one where you go through, you input your user, your name, your location, keyboard preferences, all that good stuff, and bingo, you're at this when it boots in from the live CD. So this is the desktop. This is a KDE version. They, they come in, I believe, XFCE, GNOME, KDE. Uh, don't quote me on the GNOME one, but I, I or the XFCE one, but I, I'm pretty sure that, that that is available because that's very very common. At any instance, this is what you're greeted with. Up in the left hand corner, you got an FAQ, which is that I, I kind of like. They take you right to the FAQ, so that when you're new to it or new to any of the actual 
operating systems at all, like new to Linux, this can help you out tremend tremendously here with um, different uh, questions that, that are asked and posed, and it also explains a lot. So this is something worth definitely giving it a read. If you've never used uh, MX Linux before, or if you're new to Linux, definitely give that a read. Also, they've got the MX user manual, which I, I love when distros come with these things because it helps you with understanding the distribution. And I'm telling you right now, this is almost as good as the Arch Wiki. It is full. I mean, if you look over here in the left hand pane, it is chock full of chapters and sub chapters. Of, oh, yep, XFCE right there. So it is, an, they do come with XFCE. Uh, at any instance, it's chock full of lots of good information on how to use their distribution, explaining the different parts of their distribution. Oh, it's fantastic. It truly is. Truly fantastic. I tell you, it is, to me, it's a showstopper because, you know, there's nothing more than downloading an operating system that you've never used before and you start tooling around in it and you kind of like hunt and peck and find things. It could tend to lead towards negative experience yada 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 you know i mean when when you're when you're catering to a m major distribution like like doing a spinoff you know like they did you know then then of course you know you want to try to make it as user-friendly as possible because you've implemented lots of tools lots of different changes to it and nothing better than to have a manual like that to really you know, showcase the changes and also any release notes for the new in uh, release uh, uh, distribution upgrades that they've done to it. So then you've got the conky over here in the top left hand corner, which is a much different conky than most normal. It's customized. It's their own one, which is really, really nice. It's got your date and of course your time. And then it's also got what distribution you're running, which is the MX 21.3 64-bit wildflower edition. Today's the 15th. And I'm using one gig of RAM at rest with 1% of my CPU. And that is it. And so that's it on the um, desktop environment there for the Conky, right? The wallpaper, of course, if you right click on it, uh, you get your typical KDE menu where it comes up where you can change your wallpapers. And let's go ahead and make this bigger so you can see all the different wallpapers that are available. They have lots of different. over here they've got these blue valves which look kind of cool um they've got a lot of mx you know kind of wild ones yeah I, I you know oh this is pretty apply that tulip minimize this oh that's actually pretty sharp that's that's pretty sharp. um let's try a different one just a tool around here oh let's try this ice apply minimize this yeah, we're going to stay with that one. That one looks pretty cool. I like that. But anyhow, that's how you can change your wallpapers on there. That should be standard knowledge on anything that you do KDE. What I really want to highlight in this is how well organized and put together this distribution actually. To me, that is the big thing. Is a distribution user-friendly? Whether you are a seasoned vet of Linux or whether you are actually a new to Linux user, it's got to be user-friendly especially if you're distro hopping, unless you've been to Linux, MX Linux before and kind of know the nuances of it. If you're doing this first distro hop, it's got to be user friendly. Otherwise, you're just as lost as anybody else. I mean, you might be able to learn how to use the app launcher and, and search. But for the most part, I mean, come on, you know, you want when you download KDE, you want it to be organized and pretty and highly customized. That's the whole allurement of KDE. So on the bottom, you have the panel, the KDE panel, right, which you can, of course, right click on it, edit panel. And then, of course, comes all your editing options, so you can shrink it, zoom it in, make it big, whatever you'd like to do. But anyhow, so you can you can do that with the KDE panel. But just the standard way it is looks beautiful. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have your app launcher. Then you've got your two virtual desktop switcher. Then you've got your system settings that is pinned here, as well as your Dolphin manager uh, file manager, which if we open it up, have your Dolphin right here looking just Good as ever, of course, down here at the bottom, you can zoom in and zoom out to make your icons bigger. Of course, you know, you can expand the window, you know, all the good stuff. You know, a file manager pretty much so is a file manager in look and feel, uh, just got different names. And some have a little bit more functionality than the other, but nonetheless, a file manager is a file manager. It contains your files. 
and you have access to your files through it. Then, of course, I've got Firefox pinned here because I use Firefox, uh, which is perfectly fine with me. Firefox is pretty awesome. Uh, we're opening it up for the first time, so we're going to make this all large. We're going to skip all this stuff. The new Firefox wants you to do this, so I understand that we're probably using one of the newest, like 100.8 or something like that. We'll find out in just a minute. Um, let's go here. We're going to go help about Firefox and 100.8.02. There you go, right on that one. So I mean, now let's open it up, you know, to see what how it responds from the first time. Straight up, you know, without all the skipping through. This is nice. So when you open it up, it goes right to their MX uh, MX Linux uh, forms. So you got the MX and the NTX form as well, because they are part. That's where the X comes from. M is it's because of the NTX portion of their operating system that they. Uh, anyhow, just letting you know that you could access information there as well. So then on the left hand side, you have your system monitor. If we open it up and we go to our system load, you can see that my memory is very, very light. I'm actually using less than a gig of memory right now. And I'm using a collective of maybe two, maybe 7% of my CPU. So very light on the CPU. Right next to that, you have your updater, I believe, for your eight or for your um, discovery. Yep, which it is. Your discover store so there's that i'm not going to do any of the updates of course because that's going to take too long and i don't want to make this video that long then of course you've got your yakwake um terminal which is a drop down terminal from the top and let's see if they have neofetch installed they do and you can see that we're using the papyrus icons the is going to be a breeze it's plasma 5.20 so it's definitely a older version of, of Plasma because Plasma is up to 5.26 right now. It has a 6.0 kernel. I believe an LTS version is what we're using right here. And of course the terminal is Yakquake. So that lets you know about that. So we're gonna go ahead and close Yakquake out. Then you got your clip man over here or clipboard. Then you got your volume icon, and then your ethernet uh, connectivity or Wi-Fi will be here. And then you got your time and date and of course, this little thing is your uh, hidden icons, which are in hidden notifications as well. If you click on date and time, you get this wonderful, beautiful calendar. So there's that. Now, let's go check out all the important players that are installed. So under recent applications, you got Firefox, Dolphin, and system settings, which we have uh, typical standard KDE system settings where you can go in and you can change your colors, your palette, application style, uh, your plasma style, global theme, if you click, click on it, you know, right now it's set up to MX dark, uh, workspace behaviors, uh, sound, video, display as well, audio and display right here, input devices, all those usual uh, settings that you would need to access are right there easily at your fingertips in one location. So that's under the recent files, or under the recent application under recent files, you've got the MXM PDF and the FAQ, which is the uh, user manual and the FAQ. For uh, game section, it comes with Mahjong, K Mines, K Sudoku, L Breakout, and Peggy, um, which the K ones are gonna lead me to believe that it's got the, uh, the KDE suite of applications on here, like Gwenview, Dolphin, got GIMP, Digicam, uh, it's got Laz Paint, LibreOffice under graphics, and Ocular for internet, you got Firefox, KD Connect, KD SMS, K Torrent, KRDC, uh, MX Viewer, and Thunderbird for multimedia. You have also Mixer, Clementine, Gwenview, K3B, Pavu, VLC, and Webcamoid. Now, this is the coup de grace right here. This MX Tools, this is what makes MX Linux so awesome. Everything else to me is your regular run-of-the-mill standard KDE thing, but their tools that they package in here are <laughs> some pretty pretty awesome tools. It reminds me a lot of uh, Eric Dubois' tools that he puts in for his uh, Arch-based distros. You know, from you got about MX Linux and your brightness sys tray, you can actually adjust the brightness of your sys tray. That's pretty badass. Then you got your Chirrut for rescue scan. You've got your command line app-based package manager, which is your app in terminal 
and then you got disk manager they got the format you know for usbs they got job schedulers mx boot options with this you can actually if i put in my password here you can actually fat fingered it not fat shaming just my fingers are stubbies um so anyhow you can boot you can select what you want to boot to to whatever you know different kernels if you have multiple kernels in here i mean this really allows you to even theme the the background in the grub menu so i mean it's just totally it's totally cool i mean that's what i'm saying they their their mx tool section is literally what to me sets it apart from every other debian and anti-x based distribution so you can do the boot options you can actually have a boot repair so if you have an issue with it repairing you can live cd with your boot cd and it'll fix your boot repair mx cleanup which is kind of like a file cleaning uh thing it also um since it's kind of based off debian um not kind of but it is based on debian with ntx uh what happens is the by the nature of debian they're they're remote fos they're truly fos so you don't get a lot of your codecs installed and any proprietary drivers installed so this will install the the h.264 codex you know your hd codex and those multimedia codex that are not boss so that's what that does the mx conky is the one that i talked about earlier that's different this is where you can adjust it customize it add different things the mx date and time set your date and time the live usb maker they have their own live usb maker you don't have to use like open SUSE image writer or you know regular gnome image writer they actually have their own for network assistant of course that helps you with your networking uh package installer um if we hit that i believe it is yeah it's like their um like the synaptic package installer but you go through and you click what you want so and of course they have uh like under video you've got avd mux they got caden live open shot vlc they got they got it all so they have their own curated apps for their repository as well and then of course you've got the full-on uh standard uh if i click this one you got the full-on standard um debian apps well that's the same one this but so you still have that now under um uh mx remaster now this i believe is what yeah this was like the old remaster sys that used to be down in in the day where you could actually custom configure your distribution that you had on you downloaded or installed remaster sys and it literally would make a bootable iso of your actual operating system the way you had it so if you passwords put in there it copied that if you had you know personal information on it it copied all of it it was kind of like what snapshot in in btrfs came from but it actually generated an actual iso i believe this does the same thing if you click on remaster it should want to do that antix live remaster error probably because i'm in the um i'm in uh what you call it uh virtual manager but yes we're gonna so there's that that's that's kind of a cool thing that's that they include um that you can have some fun and play with uh then you got the mx repo manager then the samba configuration file and also select sound snapshot for making an actual backup it's got their own backup tool in the mx tools which has all of those tools within here so it's kind of kind of a redundant entry as far as that is concerned but you have that, then you've got the MX Tour, which takes you on a tour of the desktop, Tweak, the use, User Manager, MX Welcome. Of course, they've got their own NVIDIA driver installer, so it should auto-detect your NVIDIA drivers or your NVIDIA card if you have it installed and automatically find the appropriate drivers and install them for you. Oh, that. So... And then, of course, you got quick system info, system keyboard, system local locales. I mean, that's the that's the actual sweet thing about MX Linux is those all, the multitude of tools that they've actually custom generated for the thing. For Office, you've got the full LibreOffice suite. Science and math, you got LibreOffice math. Then for settings, of course, you've got Kvantum. Those are the I mean the, the real important ones that you need to see here. Your firewall configuration. You've got your iDevice mounter, Kvantum, you've got your menu editor, uh, the MX tools again, and MX tweak, and system settings. 
Now for system, the ones that are the really important ones to highlight, you got your back in time, which is like uh, your time shift, that kind of stuff. It's a, um, both you have it in standard user and root. Um, one which you're always going to want to perform the root one because it's going to be able to write and save everything and read it off the drive uh, Then you got your bash config which that's different too That's something that they add in there where you can actually for bash config you could input aliases here You can add new aliases also you could um, On your prompt you can do default one you can do a fancy prompt you can do a custom prompt which is for bash for bash your prompt is when you open up your terminal here it's this right here that says let's make this it's the part where it's got your user your your name and what directory you're actually in so we're going to do control plus where it says alex at mx colon then tilde that means i'm in my root directory so this is what you can change right here using this bash config for prompt i believe if i switch to prompt and i go lines click apply see and now that's all gone that is all gone now it's just a dollar symbol <laughs> see so you, i mean i'm pretty sure you could actually customize them too and make uh, different uh do the default hit apply and we will io new tab and now it's back to being what it was so we'll hit control and make it big again so you guys can see bam see it's back to alex at mx linux and that is just a way to change that i mean you could also do it by if you're in a window at you know manager of any kind or actually any file you have a plain text editor you can actually go to your bash rc and you could edit all that in there and do that that's all this is this is a graphical front end graphical user interface let's go ahead and close the window all the tabs this is a front end gui for basically doing that it's just telling and changing lines on your bash rc file that's all this is so understand that that's what that is for so and that's going to be under settings uh, i believe that's going to do it for system um you will have your back in time your bash config your conky toggle your discover dolphin g smart control h top which you know it's just another load viewer if i you know Make that larger you'll see we're using 1.02 gigs now and very little of my cp it's not just a system load monitor so you have that then you got your info center which tells you everything that we're using if you open it up it tells you what you're running which is debian gnu linux which is the mx linux the hardware that we're using memory energy consumption all that good stuff so there's that and then you have k sysguard which is a system load again midnight commander which that is nice because midnight commander when you open it up that's exactly what it is right there let's make that large it is a tui file manager what it is it's a tui file manager that's installed in that that's actually pretty pretty cool a lot that's like a, a nerd's file manager and then um, you have the MX user manual and Yakquake in there. For utilities, your standard run of the mill utilities, Conky Manager, Conky Toggle. Some of this is redundant. KCalc, KGPG, which is a, a description, uh, Kvantum Manager, Menu Editor, Midnight Commander again, actually Midnight Commander Editor, uh, Samba 4K, Spectacle, and Sweeper, which is a file cleaner. And so, pretty much so. That is a look at MX Linux, a quick little rundown on it. It's a beautiful distribution. I still recommend it. I enjoyed it. I had no complaints whatsoever with it. In fact, there's many times where I would actually migrate back to it uh, whenever I was doing the distro hopping. But then I ran into i3, and I've just been with i3 forever now. But I, I'm kind of getting the itch to go back to a desktop environment, and if I do, more than likely it's going to be this. 
Yeah, because I, I've I just love MX Linux as far as packages are controlled. Hey, it's Debian. If you can't find a package in Debian or Arch, then you know, well, not Arch, but uh, in Debian, you know, then you've got some, you know, they've got a lot of packages, a lot of system repos as well. So, anyhow, that is it. If there's anything that you think I left out or should have mentioned, please leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe. Also, uh, make sure you hit the like button on the video as well. Share and hey, you know, join the channel if you can. Uh, diff, you know, membership's only a dollar ninety nine. Very, very, very affordable, and it's for everybody. Everybody gets the same membership because I believe that everybody's the same. There's, uh, you know, you guys are supporters of the channel. I value you equally. So, at any instance, uh, I like to say thank you to. Mirz, uh, Mislav, who is my Patreon, uh, I would like to also say thanks to uh, TJ Chief Mahoney out there who uh, gave a couple of super thanks to me on a couple of videos out there. Also, Mislav has given me a couple of super thanks. And if you get a chance, go ahead and give me a thanks as well. Uh, you guys have a great day. You keep safe. You stay blessed. And you just keep on Linuxing. Bye. Oh, yeah. Chief. Stay tuned because Modici is coming next just for you.